Welcome back. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, this is another episode of a soul medications for the day. So we're starting in James 3 today. I apologize. My voice is really cracking today. I've had this upper respiratory thing for like four weeks. So um, on the tail end of it, but I do apologize. This is not normally <clears throat> the way I talk. So that being said, well, I'm going to read the first 12 verses of James. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment, for we all humble or all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is set so is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Here's a wake-up call for those of us who are taking on more of a teaching position. This podcast was a huge step out of my comfort zone, and these first verses tell you why. First, when we step out to teach what we know, we're held to a higher standard. Have you ever had anyone try to tell you what you should do and then watch them do the opposite? Not only do you hold the teacher to a higher standard, but the higher the position, the more accountability they have. I am accountable for my clients and patients to live out the health behavior changes I am telling them to make. In Luke 12, verse 48, Jesus says, To whom much is given, much is required. When I decided to give up my desire for being in nursing leadership in healthcare of corporate America and focus more on others and helping people feel well and live healthier lives, I knew God had called me to higher standards, not only in my physical walk, cleaning up my diet and taking better care of myself, but in my spiritual life as well. When I did this, he showed me just how closely integrated the spiritual was with the physical. In James, we see the necessity of teachers and those in leadership in positions of authority for appropriate character and right living. It goes beyond just being talented or trained by education. In verses 2 to 12, we read again about our words. We see many examples, bits in the horse, mouths of horses, the rudder on a large ship. If we have control over our tongue, we are considered fully developed. The Amplified Bible reads, and if anyone does not offend in speech, never says the wrong things. He is a fully developed character and a perfect man, able to control his whole body and to curb his entire nature. The bit and rudder are very small objects compared to the power of a horse or the sailing of a mighty ship. But if these powerful vessels lose control, it can be disastrous. Just like the ship's rudder in the horse's bridle. Who is in control of your tongue? I used to speak my mind until I realized the consequences. In verse 5 to 12, we get an idea of how powerful our words can be. Remember the saying, sticks and stones will break your bones, but names can never hurt me. How often 
that I remember reciting those lines only to run back home crying because truth is words do hurt. Unfortunately, as a child, some words were said to me by a very significant, important person in my life. And those spoken words brought hurt for a lifetime. James tells no man can tame the tongue. But then doesn't God's word say with God, all things are possible when we place ourselves under the control of the Holy Spirit? Then we see the contradictory character of our tongue, blessing God, which is the highest calling, versus cursing man, who has been made in the very image of God. This is the lowest of evil. These things ought not to be so. Do you find yourself with two vocabularies? One that is praise the Lord, church lingo, and another for outside church, more of a backyard barbecue kind of jargon. In verse 10, we read, these things ought not to be so. As a matter of fact, we see here, it is impossible. You cannot get salt water and fresh water from the same spring. This means that your blessings must really not be words of blessings in the eyes of God. Charles Spurgeon said, unless you are regenerated, born from above by a new and heavenly birth, you are not Christians, whatever you may be called, and you cannot produce the fruit which is acceptable to God any more than a fig tree can produce olive berries. Calling yourself a Christian does not make myself a Christian. Dressing like a Christian, wearing a cross necklace or a what would Jesus do bracelet does not make me a Christian. Treating myself like a Christian, going to church, buying a Bible does not make me a Christian. Surrounding myself with other Christians does not make me a Christian. But God, love the but God, loved me so much that he gave his only beloved son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me. And when I believed in him, I was given the gift of eternal life with him and that, my dear friends, made me a Christian. This regeneration and daily walking in Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit is my only hope to have a fully developed character and to be perfected and speak words that bring life, having control over my whole body. I hope you are all encouraged today by this wonderful word in James. Have a wonderful and restful weekend, and I will see you back here Monday morning for another dose of soul medication. May God richly bless you.